Hello everyone. In this video, we will have a look at how you can add index numbers to your queries in Power Query. We will do it for a single group and then have a look at how you can do that on different, uh, an index number per group that we're looking at. So an index number here is a sequential increasing number that starts at one and then increases for the amount of items that you'll see. Let's have a look at how that works. So the screen here contains two main color groups. It's the group other and popular. Now, if you wanna add just a regular index number, you could go to add column, click on index column from one. And as you can tell, it will add a sequence here. It will add a sequence that starts at one and then just raises till the amount of rows you have. Now, sometimes you might want this, this uh, sequence of numbers to be de dedicated to each of the groups you're at. Now, how can you do that? Let's, let's first look at an example that works with separate steps. So the code that we have here, let's use that as a template and you can copy paste that. And then this exact same code, we are going to use it in a column. So, but before we get there, let's see if we can group our data. So we have two unique groups, the group other and popular. And then if you go to the home tab and click on group by, then the color group is our main grouping and I would like the all rows operation to return everything that is grouped in a table. So there's now two groups left, other and popular, and the table object next to it contains all of the rows that were just grouped. And you can see that by clicking on it. So the first table here shows everything for other, and that second table includes everything for popular. Now we just saw how you can add an index number to our original table. That same code we can actually use to adjust the table that is just created in this tab here. And to do that, you can go to add columns, add a custom column. And since I copied the code, I can just paste it here and have a good look at what happens here. So when we look at our code, the first step right here says sorted rows. That is the reference to the table that it used to at the column two. So the other table was called sorted rows and that's right here in the steps. And in our case, we don't have a previous step to reference, but we actually have a table that's in a column. So we can replace this code and then instead just reference the column name called details. And then we can just add table with index as a name. Now, after you press okay, you'll find that the original table first had like other color and sales amount. And the new table you find here has that index number for each of the table objects. So it's in the top one, but also in the bottom one here. So if you remove all the other columns, you can expand what we have here. And then you'll find that the number sequences increase like this. That is one way to do it. So this way to do it actually required a few extra steps. Now I'm gonna show you a few more ways that are a bit shorter, but also a bit more complex. So let's remove the steps that we had here. And again, I would like to copy the code that we just had, which is this one here. Okay, so first I'd like to show you a method that might be the easiest. So you can have account rows here. So what we do again is you group your rows and now you have a count rows operation. And the count rows operation shows here what happens. So it takes as one of the calculations, a table row count. And we can adjust this piece of formula with the table index column uh, part that we just had. So you can check this part, paste the code that we had for our index formula. So that's the big part that I pasted right here. And we just have to replace a small part of the function. So instead of having to reference a column name, we can replace this. And what we are going to ask Power Query to do is to group our data and all the underlying rows that are underneath to all those underlying rows to add an index column to it. And you can reference those underlying rows by doing an underscore, just like this. Okay. So now if we look at the preview from the table, then in the bottom, you can see right away that the index column is here, but there is one more problem because the code is showing that it's an integer type. So the previous operation showed us that we were going to do a row count and Power Query automatically gave it an integer type, which makes sense. But since we adjusted the code now, if you wanna make uh, use of the table 
that's right here, then you need to change the type here to table type. So type table. Uh, let's see. So perhaps this works. Oh, I'm, I'm deleting the wrong part. So actually your, your index number is still the integer type, but this last part here, that needs to be the type table. There you go. The effect of this is, because the column is now recognized as a table, you will find those two arrows in the top. And now you can actually expand everything you have here. And since you already have the color group, I'll just deselect it. Now, if I press OK, you find that we already have this index column that is generated row by row. So this saves you a little step. With the previous method, you had a custom column first, then you adjusted the table object, and then you expand it. And this one does it right away. OK, that's method number two. Now, before we move to method number three, there is one thing that's important to look at, because so far, we have just assumed that the order wasn't important. And if we look at our data, you can find that for the first example, uh, the color group other, then the index one belongs to the color multi. And if we look at the group called popular, then actually the first index is on the black part, the black color. This might not be the order that you want to have. So what we can do is we can go back. And before we grouped everything, there was a certain order here. Now, the only sorting that has been done so far is on the color group. Now we can, for example, say we want to next to the color group also sort it by color in ascending order. And then if we go to the part here, you can find that it's still the same. So the multicolor and the black color is index one. But if you go back here and you actually do it the order for colors descending instead of ascending. Now, if you go back to this step, then all of a sudden you'll find that the first index is now white and the first index for the popular group is now yellow. So you can play around with this. It's most likely that you'll be working with things like order IDs or dates, where it's important to have things in a certain order. So make sure that that sorting is done correctly before you start the grouping and adding the index. OK, so now for the finale, we still have another way in which we can expand things. And it's a little bit similar to what we did earlier, but I want to show it to you anyway. OK, so let's say we have a starting position like this, and we are happy that everything is sorted like it. Now, we're going to start in the same way that we want to group everything by the first column. And what we're going to do different now is we're going to click the all rows operation and call this details. And this will group everything by color group. And all of the group rows will now be in a table object. We've seen that before. So that's the part right there. Nothing new so far. Now, if you want to make your life even easier, um, we can even adjust things here. Because we are already grouping here on a table object, and it's saying that it's grouping the details column by each underscore here. And instead of grouping it by each underscore, we can actually make sure that the, the code that we just had is pasted here. And let's see what's happening. OK, and we actually have an index. And now if you expand, there's something funny going on. So our table object here is actually showing us that the index column is created. But if you expand over here, you don't see it anymore. Now, why is that? OK, so the code that we looked at, first of all, it tells us what to do as an operation. But after that, after the table is created, you can find that between these records here are actually the column names and the column types. So the benefit of this method is that actually the column types that you have will remain after grouping and expanding. The downside is, since we adjusted this, we have not included the index column that we wanted. So for us to be able to expand this column here, we actually need to add the index column here as well. So let's see how this works. So I could add a comma here and say that the index column is also a nullable number. And now if we leave it like that, we can expand with the color group we already had. And you can press OK as well. And with that, with the regular grouping operation, you can actually add your index number to each of the separate groups you've grouped by. And that should make your life a lot easier. 
Now, these three methods, just pick one that's uh, that's the one that you prefer, but this just shows a little bit how flexible M is, and I hope it shows you also a little bit more on the syntax and how you can adjust things. Now, I hope that was helpful. If you're new to the channel and wanna see more of these kind of videos, make sure to subscribe, and then I'll see you in the next, uh, next video. Ciao.